Hey, welcome back to Black Lab Garage. Me and my chief mechanic here. Uh, we're going to show you how to put a floor pan, cab mount, uh, bushings, and uh, my old 74 F350. I ain't going to lie, it was a long, hard process because I did it with the cab on the frame. It's a whole lot easier if you can do it with the cab off and the cab flip backwards, but well, we don't have that luxury, so. I'm gonna show you how to do it. And I will go ahead and tell you, and I'll say something about it in the video. Um, I didn't have any help to set the seat out. The gas tank's behind the seat. So I'm gonna say this one more time. Don't do it like I did. Find you some friends to help you set the seat and tank out. There's your disclaimer. There's your safety warning, all right? Come on, let's get into it. Well, you can see what we're dealing with here on the floor pan. Sad part is it ain't just the floor pan. It's got the cab mount too. So we're gonna put the floor pan and cab mount in it. And it'd be a whole lot easier if I took this fender off. But to be honest, I'm gonna go ahead and take the whole front clip off because that's gonna make it easier to set the motor in. Plus, I'm gonna get rid of this Uncle Jesse grill. I just never liked the split grill. Sorry to those of you that do, but uh, I don't like it. It's gotta go. Now before we get started too much, which I've done hit it one lick, but we need to jack the cab up and support it before we cut the mount and the floor out. Let me hit it one more lick here and that should, because it was way out at the bottom. That looks pretty good right there. I'm gonna put a jack stand under it with a, a board on top to spread the load out and we'll leave it right there. That's a pretty dang good gap. All right, I cut one piece out just to see how close the uh, frame was because I knew it was getting close. But as you can see, I want to go way further over. I went ahead and draped a uh, fiberglass blanket over the seat because, well, I'm by myself, so I got no help to set the seat out. And also because the gas tank is behind the seat. So listen, please don't do like I'm doing. Get you some help and take the seat out and take the gas tank out before you do this. I would if I could. I don't have a choice. My only neighbors don't speak English. So I'm not even going to try to explain that to them. So... There's your safety warning. Do not do as I do on this part. Take the seat and the tank out. Well, we got that much of it cut out. I want to go right along up through here with the cutoff wheel and just make me a slit so I can get my sawzall in there. And I want to saw right across through here with the sawzall. And I've also took a small grinder and I've exposed the spot welds in the floor where it welds to the cab mount. I thought I'd go ahead and drill them out before I finish slicing across through here. It'll make it easier. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you, right here, that's what they call a spot weld claw bit. That is the only thing to have. Like I've had those that like has a little saw, little round saw on the end of it. Don't waste your time with those. Get you one of these spot weld claws. Cause here I'll show you. They don't walk everywhere. See there. There it 
is. Spot well gone. that loose. Well, loose from the mount, I mean. Well, there's one big chunk of it out. And you can see what's left of the cab mount. Nothing. It's what's left of the cab mount. <sighs> the stuff I get myself into. You can see the size of the cab mount. I mean, it's it's just... The other side's not bad. Why this side done it, I have no idea. Well, I just pulled real hard on this and... There's that part of the cab mount. It's really all that's left is just cutting the cab mount loose from the firewall. Which will be an adventure in itself, let me just tell you. Well, I ended up having to cut the head off that bolt. I want to take an air chisel with a punch and try to drive the rest of that bolt out. I don't know if I can or not, but I won't try. Because to get to the rest of this cab mount that's along this pinch weld on the front of the cab, you also got to take the inner fender out because you can see it goes in behind it there just barely but it does so you got to take all these bolts out and of course you got some back here you got to take these out you got to take these out up here at the front and you got to take radiator support loose had to cut those two so let me try to punch this bolt out. Well, right there is exactly what I was hoping not to see. That's where the rubber cab mount sits on the frame. I've seen pictures and stuff of people running into this. I've never had this problem with one, which I'm down south, so, you know, most of the ones I've seen that had this problem was from up north. So that this is a total new one on me. But now that I've got the inner fender off, you can see the rest of the uh, cab mount has to come loose. It just goes to right here. So I'll just take our air chisel and knock it loose and then we've got that done. As far as that, I'll just have to get a great big washer or cut a piece of metal and weld in there. I mean, that's all you can do. And the hits just keep on coming. You see, I've got most of the uh, cab mount tore loose from the pinch weld there, but as I was vibrating it, look here beside the steering column. The rust followed that cab mount and went right on up the steering column, or beside of it. So I'm going to have to patch a piece in there. Oddly enough, it didn't rust the pinch weld out though. That's, but it, it's right dead square in line with where the cab mount is. Yay me. It's now day 763 of the floor pan install. But you know, actually I've got to brag, these uh, auto metal direct floor pans fit pretty dang good. I've got to trim a little bit right here where the steering column goes, which as you can see, I took the steering column and the brake pedals, or the clutch and pedal assembly out took the gas pedal out but I've got to trim just a smidge right there I've got to cut a hole in where the clutch rod goes through and I need to trim a little bit back here because it's just a little bit too tall but hey I would much rather it be a little too tall or too long than to be too short and I've also smoothed this hole up getting ready to make a pattern to cut out so we can weld a piece in there. 
All right, now let's take our piece of cardboard that I've conveniently cut out of a Little Caesars box. No judgment, okay? My dogs like the crust. Now let's see here. Trace around it. And I know there's somebody asking, why didn't you just use a washer? Honestly, I tried to find a washer. I could not find a washer big enough to fit the hole. I'd love to use a washer, but I literally could not find one. So, as usual, we'll make do with what we got. I got some sheet metal. And there's the shape. Don't ignore where I, you know, I wasn't good at tracing in elementary school, okay? Now let's go cut this out. Alright, I'm trying to get to where I have to cut as little as possible off of it. Of course, I'm tracing around the outside of this, but what we actually want to do is cut to the inside. Because we want it to go in the hole, not just fit the hole. Of course, if we also cut to the outside, it ain't going to fit the hole either. It'll just set on top of it. All right. See if I can get this cut out. Well, there's the uh, frame mount. Uh, that's probably about as good as it's going to get. Real good considering I used a 110 welder and uh, my welding helmet died on me, so I had to weld it with my eyes closed. Fine times. Uh, after I get the cab mount on the floorboard, not permanent, but once I get it where it needs to go, I'm going to mark where the bolt goes through, and then I'll come back and cut the hole in it for the uh, urethane cab mount to go through. All right, let's shoot a couple self tappers in here to make sure it's pulled down good so I'll know how much to trim along the edge up here. Couldn't find regular self tappers. You know what the heck said. Had to get these. I guess uh, Dalton from Pole Bong Garage has been through here and bought all of them. <laughs> now you can see I went through and marked along the edge where we're going to weld the pan in. So I'm doing that. I want to take a uh, a roll up conditioning disc and go through and knock his paint off so we can get a good weld. Now we just go around through here making tack welds, welding it in, but now up here there's a, a tab that sticks out in this way and I want to do spot welds there. Well, those that welds, whatever you want to call them because I don't have a spot welder. And then up here also there's a tab that sticks out and I want to do the same thing there. But for most of the rest of it I'm just going to just tack it along the edge there. Now let's see if we can get this cab mount on here. I'm just sticking it up here. I'll stick some of these clamps on it just to hold it. And then we'll go over to the other side and measure it. And get a rough idea where it needs to go. You know I went back and I measured my four wheel drive that I've caused it. It didn't look right here over top of this mount at two and a sixteenth like the passenger side. So I went back and measured my four wheel drive. It only measured an inch and a half on this side. So I scooted it back this way inch and a half and actually now it looks about right. So I'm gonna reach in here with this Sharpie and mark the bolt hole. And the hole I've got to cut for that is an inch and three quarter. That should be 
your uh, body rubber body mount or ball years on whatever you're using where it goes through that the uh, frame bracket here should be an inch and three quarters now we got to deal with this piece here in the door frame so drill the spot welds out Sure, there's another one here somewhere, but to be honest, it's a freaking rusty. I can't see it. Look at that. That's what was in behind that. That's why they rust out. Because that can't hardly clean that out. Best thing to do is drill some holes up underneath here where dirt and water and stuff can drain out to prevent that. Now let's see how this fits. I had to get it from LMC. They was the only place that had it. Or that's the only place I could find it anyway. Okay. All right, before we start welding, this patch in, I'm going to put a little bit of this USC weld through primer on. Well, I'm going to put it on this part and on my truck, both. May not help anything, but it certainly ain't going to hurt. Now, I did put something on the metal here to treat the rust before I sprayed the uh, weld through primer on it. Just for the record, I just want to say I, I did try to kill the metal. Or kill the rust. I won't kill the metal with welding it, but I did try to kill the rust. I'll get it I'll get it right here in a second. We're getting there. I'm grinding them down. Which I was going to show you. I know a lot of people like to use uh, the flap disc and stuff. Personally, I like to use a cutoff wheel. And these uh, 3M weld grinding wheels. Some people call it a weld buster kind of green looking. I love these things. That's about all I use when grinding down welds like that. They work fast and they last a long time. Well there it is all welded in and ground down. I really really hate how they chop that panel off like that. I mean you know it's supposed to come straight across and they cut it at an angle. I just but it is what it is I mean but it just it looks about like a three-legged prostitute in Vegas. It works, I guess, but it's just not right. So I'm gonna, I'm actually just gonna brush a little epoxy primer on because it's supposed to rain tomorrow. So I'm gonna brush that on and make sure it don't rust. All right, let's put a little fiberglass on here. Now, some people are gonna frown on this. I do not strip mine all the way down to bare metal. You don't have to. stuff works by mechanical adhesion so all it needs is something you know to scratch it up and the reason I do that well if you remove this epoxy you just expose this bare metal to whatever moisture is in the air 
Then you're gonna put filler in over top of it. So what'd you do? You just trapped that moisture in there. And guess what happens down the road? It starts rusting and then it pops out. Now, I mean, if you wanna take yours down to bare metal, by all means, have at it. I'm just not going to. Which, I mean, we're not trying to make this look real pretty anyway because, well, it's in a, it's in a door jam. And I don't use no kitty hair. That's like trying to spread 1970s shag carpet around. I use this uh, U Paul Fibrol, Fib, Fibrol, whatever. It's light, like Miller Light. Actually, no. It's produced by you probably out of luck you see it ain't real it ain't like kitty hair now get your trusty little caesar's box yes i know i should have one of those fancy boards and normally i actually do i've not done any body work in a while and I used my last one up. That's actually why I don't have one right now. So, pizza box it is. Oh yeah, I always use a new squeegee. Key to good body work is a good square squeegee. Now let's take our wire wheel and go around and clean these welds up. Or you know, the space in between them where I made the pack. Now we're going to take a DA with some 80 grit on it to the floor pan here. Now I'll take the same 80 grit and DA and lock on this. block sand now I'll smear some uh, epoxy primer back on it so it's supposed to be rain moving in again I think that's all it does anymore here is rain Now, I want to use this here uh, brushable seam sealer and go around where I welded the floor pans in. see what it says brushable adhesive seam sealer designed exclusively for automotive uses flexible will not crank shriek crack shrink harden or sag seals cracks crevices and body seams waterproofs and insulates painable in 30 minutes hell I know some women that could use some of this
All right. Now we're going to coat these uh, floor pans because I'm not going to put a mat back in this thing for a while. I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum truck bed coating. Check this out. I got it at Ollie's for uh, $19.99 a gallon. Now the catch is, it's clear. Well, kind of milky looking, but they say it's clear. So I'm going to take some Rust-Oleum flat black and mix in with it. Give it a little color. I'm doing that because I don't like my feet sliding around on a slick surface. And since we're not going to be putting a mat back in it for a while. Now. Should have brought my tray out here, but I didn't. I actually have one of those special rollers just for this. I ain't got a clue where I put it at. I lost it when I moved. All right, what I did here, this is, uh, let me zoom the camera out a little bit, well, out. This is one of the original body mount washers, but they were rotten, so I cut it off, and then I found these bushings at the hardware store, and just knocked that one down inside of this one, and welded it to it. Fits right inside of our propane mount, which it'll squish out some, so it should tighten them up. I won't squish out a whole lot, but it'll squish out some, but still yet it beats nothing. So now, here's a moment of truth. Let's see if it fits in there. Would you look at that? Get a little bit more light on it here so you can see. It fits perfectly. So now let's drop our bolt down through it. So now all we gotta do is put the bottom half on. All right, and what I did here, that's your bushing, or the rubber propane bushing. Well, urethane, I should say. And that's two more of those bushings from the hardware store. And I had to grind that one in the middle down because it stuck out a little bit and then just put a washer on the bottom. So now, let's get it put in. And just in case you're wondering, I've got a lock washer and a nylock nut, both. Let me zoom in here a little bit. There we go. I just need to get my impact and tighten it on down. So there's one other thing left to do before we call it finished. But yeah, I've still got to put my cover over it, which I've got it right here. But I'll put the cover on after I do this next to last step. And that is we're going to use, you can see, some of this uh, high-tech rubberized undercoating. I've had pretty good luck out of high-tech stuff. My local paint jobber sells it, and it's, it's actually been pretty good stuff. And it's pretty reasonably priced. But we want to undercoat it, so we don't have to go through this process again in a few years.
So I want to finish undercoating this. Unfortunately, you didn't get to see me seam seal the bottom of it, but I promise you I did. I just had to do it in a hurry one day after work while the sun was shining because it seems to rain. I think I've moved to England or something because it rains all the time here now. But uh, I appreciate you watching. Be sure and like, subscribe, because me and the pups, we really appreciate it. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Th the up, not the down, but the up. I appreciate each and every one of you. So stay tuned. I'll be back with another.